Lemon Amiga Presents A Play Child Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Hi, welcome to another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. This time we'll be taking a look at Putty Squad, developed and released by System 3 in time for Christmas 2013. The game opens with a very smooth musical introduction, and from here in the options menu we can either switch on and off the music and sound effects, and we can also enter a password and we will be given three lives no matter if we enter the password or not but for this experiment we will start from level one and let's see how far we get in putty squad we play as non surprisingly a putty and he can jump and he can flatten and he can stretch in all different directions he can also punch his way out of trouble and these frogs unfortunately cannot be destroyed because they need a special weapon that special weapon is the nitro and the nitro can be found once per level maybe twice and you do not start with any special weapons you have to pick those up at the start of every level by pulling down there we can fall to the ground and that will absorb the nitro and we can pull down and press fire that will release the nitro and blow up these frogs we are also invulnerable to our own nitro blasts and that makes those worthwhile in a battle we also have a partner this cat known as dweezel and if you let him kick you you will leave a bomb behind which can sometimes destroy enemies on the screen on every level there is always a stockpile of these enemy grunts waiting to be knocked away we can punch those away and that will earn us some small score we also picked up a small tube with a fish if we drop that that will alert the dweezel character and then we can rearrange him anywhere we like on the level we can also punch him to the ground and use him as a trampoline which also comes in handy as we shall see later on and so the smart ass humour in this game really starts to shine through let's punch those guys out and oh, see those flying helmets there but the aim of each level is to simply absorb your friends and here they are, they are always red blobs there you can absorb those putties and they will be your friends and yes you can see me collecting those stars and they will make a huge difference later on at the moment we can only punch or just like Turrican we can jump on those guys heads and flatten them to the ground and then we can knock that off for another 10 points so that's yet another way to kill those enemies we will find several ways later on but let's continue with the mission and the mission is always to rescue the missing in action M.I.A. OK is what you're going to get because you'll find a number of missing in action friends and you may also notice that when we jump on those guys and punch them out they will also deliver stars we have 17 stars at the moment and you see that star off the edge there how do we collect that? well the answer lies in this crate you'll find green crates dotted around the landscape and by collecting some of these items we'll find extra health the chicken there and the meat uh, but we can also find this power pill and that will give us a balloon we can now use this to collect those stars but you see my health will be decreasing there luckily we can press fire and that will drop nitro on those frogs and anything else which lies beneath and when we get tired of doing that we can always return back to the ledge hold down fire and pull back on the stick and that should eject us from that balloon and now we can collect those items and restore our health and um, we have 24 stars there if we reach 20 stars we will gain an extra weapon before we see that let's concentrate on the frogs by pulling down and pulling left and right we can alternate between the nitro and the cat but for the moment it's a good idea to clear our way through this level and that will earn us extra bonus score 
if we have over 20 stars that will give us the bonus weapon and in this case the first bonus weapon is the bow and the arrow by pressing fire we can now fire a torrent of arrows along in a straight line and that will blow up nearby enemies and save us the job and arrows certainly can travel those distances we can also collect this which is a shield and if we leave a nice roll handily behind there we can take out that grinning placement and those fire homing missiles so having the shield there has really saved our life you might notice there we can actually squeeze past obstacles such as that fork and we can also use the shield because nothing will deplete our energy once we have the shield and even those guys you can see the animation there the guys trying to rattle that shield and well sometimes you can't always avoid those things but here we are this is the end of the first level already and if we are short of health that the box of goodies will help us and if we need to summon the cat there that extra item will help you can see that great animation there and the sausage on the fork helps with those comical animation effects there and we can simply now duck down because we are a putty we can squeeze through those gaps we do not need to exit the pyramid what we need to do is exit the level we have to hold down fire and push up there and that will exit the level and you can see we went over the 30 stars barrier and actually gave us a new weapon and now we have the electric finger usually around the start of every level you will find the cat and also the nitro and the cat food so you can have all those upgrades early we can leave all this food behind there and that will not give us any extra score either but let's collect the nitro and the cat food and you might hear there that the guards, those grunts, those enemy agents are waiting there to shoot weapons and so let's fire those to get the extra star by collecting those extra stars we can gain ammo upgrades which will certainly help us on this level but let's use that trusty nitro again to try and blow up those frogs and hopefully that will take down the guys well the electric finger did it for us in this section you can already see stars that we cannot get and MIAs that we cannot get but we can get this MIA and we can also collect this mystery item for a little bonus score by pulling down we can use these teleports and just like Mario there, subtle hint, we can jump up and we can release some more items. Along here we'll also find a mystery door which appears when we walk beyond that and by holding down fire and pushing up we can enter those doors but you may have noticed those sunglasses there and that will actually help us see those doors so by pushing up to jump and then rapidly pushing up three times we can actually inflate ourselves into a balloon that certainly comes in handy because now we can collect those items and we gain that extra strength back yes when we are in that balloon we will lose energy just like we ride around in the putty mobile the putty balloon we will lose that energy but let's hold fire and push up and those sunglasses there will enable us to see those exits but we've just lost those but the aim of this bonus level is to rescue more MIAs and by pulling down we can rescue those and they will deliver stars at this stage it's important to collect all those stars because if we have 40 or more that will allow us to fire bombs and bombs are weapons which will traverse the level they will actually ride on platforms and run along ledges so bombs certainly are the best weapon and they get rid of the hardest enemies you can hear bouncing around there that's actually a carrot on the top level and carrots and look at that there's a spaceman that's an extra bonus score you sometimes find spacemen on the level but carrots are definitely hard to kill and require the bombs you notice we have those stars now by collecting those and that allows me to jump up and kill those carrots if we didn't have the firepower then those carrots are indestructible and there is yet another carrot further along the screen look at that collecting those stars and yet enemies there rob us of even more stars so let's collect those and exit to this bonus level is there and by shooting the cat down we can use him as a portable trampoline and that will help us get those stars but you can see there the carrot can shoot bullets rapidly and 
so we have to knock that down and by bouncing onto Weasel we can collect those stars. If we fall below the 60 stars by getting hit then we will degrade our weapon back to the boat and the arrow but for now well stretches won't do us any good but we can use the bombs there just to blow those guys away and you can see endlessly respawning enemies there and look at that there is an enemy above us he can fire very powerful rams indeed and we take the bombs to blow him away we can also use this which is a red hot chili pepper and that will mean that we are invulnerable to everything while we have that and the bombs will even blow the frogs away which is also very helpful but the reason why I'm backtracking all the way to the beginning is basically because when we exit that bonus level we'll lose the nitro which is crucial and we'll also lose the cat food so let's pick those back up and let's return back to where we were before as you can tell already there are various puzzles in this game and if you don't know what you are doing and how to do it well you'll fail in this case I'm summoning the Dweasel cat uh, we will not blow up in a balloon because that will waste our energy but let's summon Dweezel and bounce onto some of those high ledges that will save us some energy by not blowing ourselves up into a balloon but just in case we need some energy well that's always lying around there anyway but in this case I will pick up the sunglasses not that we need those and if we re-summon the cat well that didn't quite work if the cat is in a reasonable distance away we can re-summon the cat there you go and he will literally fly to our aid and let's use him and use the punching mechanism yet again to make him serve a purpose and now we can jump on there and collect a number of those stars maybe not them all but that's one way to get those stars but there is another way as we shall see later on now we are stuck on this bottom level and we need a way to rise or get out of there but let's not forget Dweezil is here to help us and so let's make full use of him and so definitely little tricks have to be learnt like the bombs for example will give us 250 points by blowing up that cat otherwise we will have to get very close to him and use the nitro and he has a very powerful gun so that is not recommended this is actually a no way back unless you blow yourself up like a balloon and or you jump on Dweezil so that's another one of those things and yes being hit whilst you're in a balloon doesn't really help but if you as I say jump and push up three times that is the emergency option MIA. let's collect more of those MIAs you can see the levels are varied and even though this is only level 2 the puzzles on offer and the level of difficulty has started to rise we can use different tricks to get to various platforms and on this section it looks like we are trapped we have enemies respawning there endlessly from all sides and I'm trying to land on this guy's head there and then I can gain the extra star and unfortunately we can only have 99 stars but we are up to 83 but even though it looks like we are trapped we can actually use the floorboards and under the floor it is a nice runway that we can run in between the level so you can use that to collect those stars and let's blow away those guys as well on here you'll also find some food in case you are running dry and you'll also find a very pesky green critter there green worm cannot be destroyed with any known weapon as far as I've been able to tell Am I okay? so that's just one MIA left to find and we have yet to get to those stars and so that's another thing that we have to work out about lots of burgers there stacks of burgers in case we need more energy and that's what's good about these early levels it gives you lots of energy what's not good about these early levels is the level of difficulty and these things start off taxing unless you know the way to go I do know the way and that is this way and that brings us all the way back virtually to the start of the level it gives us a putty mobile there a putty balloon so let's not hesitate let's utilize that P and well picked up the food there by mistake it's usually helpful to leave the food behind but let's get those stars and sometimes there is a spaceman also in that vicinity and you can collect him for extra score but as we shall see later on score doesn't really matter in this game because the score wraps itself around after 99,000 and so here's the exit let's exit that level you certainly don't get any score for collecting food or tokens as far as I can see but you do gain score obviously for killing those endless grunts on every level so 
let's move on to level three. Level three opens with a change of scenery, a change of music, but the same enemies are there, the same army guys are waiting to be destroyed. But these guys there cannot be destroyed again with any known weapon because the bombs are the most powerful upgrade that we can have. We're on 92 stars there. That certainly hasn't dented that guy, so don't even bother. So there are indestructible enemies in this game, and there are enemies which will kill us on contact, and there are things which will kill us on contact, so you definitely need the shield for this part because these dropping blocks, whatever they may be, will kill us. And because we have the bombs, we can also kill those wizards. Ordinarily, those wizards are difficult to hit. And yes, we can also hit this guy, and he will also drop another star. And extra food there, the cat food is also important. But while we have this shield on us, let's get Nitro. And just before that runs out, hopefully, we can then storm in, storm the castle, and blow him up. Those guided missiles are difficult enough to avoid otherwise. It certainly isn't obvious where those MIAs are, so my best measure, my best recommendation is to sweep and clear. And that way we can backtrack all the way back to the start, and yes, if we have sweeped a selection of a level, then we know that is clear. And let's move on. There are relatively small levels at this stage, but later on they will be huge compared to this. And if we should leap off there into that pit of death, then we'll die and lose all our stars. That is very bad news because if we are on 98 stars and the best weapon in the game, we have all the pickups and all the lives, then if we die, we'll lose the best weapon because we'll go back to the punch and that will make progress on these levels very hard indeed. But let's use those to our advantage and well, this level can be jumped off. You will be safe if you fall off that ledge, but again, that has to be learnt through trial and error. These maps aren't obvious when the player starts and it's only because I've played this level a number of times do I know the tricks involved. It's certainly great to have so many tricks in a game like this and the putty balloon and the nitros and the different ways to kill enemies is certainly favourable and even though we can't gun those down like Turrican we can still find the bow and the arrow and the bombs there which will do a similar job. The character moves very very fluidly and he can turn mid jump so we can turn back on ourselves if we are just about to die and he is very fluid indeed. In fact he can stretch as we have seen and sometimes getting those stars in awkward places requires a stretch but sometimes he cannot jump just high enough for those platforms and you can see I'm just below the platform I really need there and so I'll have to ride this and well, missed it, missed it again. I have to ride this to the top. So sometimes the levels aren't obvious, but it helps certainly to memorize all the ways to do different things on each level, and then you can fly through the level without any harm. Luckily, we are now at the end of the level, and so all we need to do is either summon the cat to jump up there, or figure out that we can actually stand on that ledge, and if we summon the cat, we can bounce on him use that to exit. So these levels aren't easy by a long stretch and sometimes knowing the fact that you can jump on guys heads and figuring things out the hard way really helps and certainly levels like this. Luckily this level is actually a long tower but how are you supposed to reach those guys? It's difficult enough well all you can do is bounce on the cat and use lateral thinking. You can reach every platform by using the cat bounce technique and sometimes that is crucial to destroy those enemies and that allows you to progress in the game. Yes, you can fall up and down ladders and you can avoid enemies there at the last moment, which can help. And so you can always avoid those bullets because we can actually outpace those bullets on the screen. So just like dogs of war, we can dodge and move at the last moment. So sweep and clear, dodge and move. Where have we heard those before? Yes, Putty Squad does resemble an attack and you really do have to lay into these guys. You can't afford to have those lying around the level because sometimes now that they can fire guns, it's certainly not helpful to have missiles heading your way. 
So even though we are on 98 stars, let's just prove to the world that it is possible to gain those stars and the controllability of the character makes sure that we can perform those pixel perfect jumps like that and get out of trouble the hard way. The easy way is to collect this, which will give us another bonus item. The note will make sure that the enemies freeze on the entire level and we only have a certain time limit while that music plays to go around. We can rescue our MIAs, we can also destroy certain things and collect the store. This game is just on the right side of being crazy. Some of the aspects and some of the power-ups, the things that you can do, are really funny and actually it gives the good player something to aim for when they find themselves laughing at the action on the screen. Or sometimes not. Yes, sometimes we can fall all the way back to the beginning of the level. So let's power up again and let's use Zid, whatever that says, on the side of that balloon. And we can then fast forward to our next MIA. Unfortunately, we cannot stretch down there. That is yet another limitation. But unfortunately, we have to fall off these ledges because they are just too high. It would have been a good idea to be able to stretch between the ledges more but in this case, it just means that we need to summon up Dweezil and use him to get ourselves out of there. And on these narrow ledges, that isn't always easy because he will approach and try to kick us. So let's get him and use that technique. And so aiming for platforms there and timing things isn't hard. Sometimes with this perfect control system, it's certainly a joy to whiz through these levels, collect those stars, and the player should find that they progress just a little further with every dedicated play. But you may have noticed on this level that we have yet to find the Nitro. And because we have a mobile army perched up on that ledge there, we'll need to find that Nitro. And on this level, as far as I know, that requires dodges. Maybe you can use the pussy balloon to rise above this level and not incur any damage. But I find as long as we have those bombs, we usually get out of most pits of death and most bits of trouble. And if we fall down, we will not fall into an endless pit of death. Unlike several other levels, we will simply fall down a few levels in the game. So that's fine. And also, let's use the nitro again to dispose of that guy. Well, we can't because we still have not found the nitro. So where is it? Well, you'll actually find it further up, virtually at the top of this level, and then you can return down and get rid of that guy for extra bonus points. But yes, sometimes, at some points of the level, you'll not be able to destroy things, and you may have to backtrack if you want to collect all the items. This wouldn't be so bad if the scores were any bigger, but as we shall see, once the player gets to level 16 or so, the scores wrap around, and so milking these endless enemies and those respawning items which appear isn't always fun, but to begin with, on these early levels, it certainly is fun, and exploring these early levels and mastering those, really progressing quickly there, is certainly a blast. Graphics there are very well drawn and very colourful indeed on the AGA chipset. Taking a look at the SNES version, it is a valiant attempt but still not as good as the original Amiga. And the original Amiga was developed in 1994 and then basically abandoned. And so they got virtually 99% of the way through the game before it was cancelled. They really didn't think that they'd get their money back. And, well, they didn't get their money back because it was eventually released to the public, Putty Squad, in 2013. And December 2013 from 1994 is basically 20 years. So what can you do in those 20 years? Quite a lot. And so you can see screenshots from the PS4 version there. Actually blow this version away because that uses 256 million colours rather than 256 colours as its maximum. And the game is just as smooth and just as playable as it is on the Amiga 1200. But you can see there that is greater value on the PS4. But meanwhile on the Amiga, you can see I'm getting my ass kicked there because the endless enemies can fire missiles towards us and those missiles will certainly land on target and blast away at our health. 
So on this section, we must negotiate a very hard wizard. Luckily, we have the bombs, so that's not too bad. And over these pits of death, which aren't usually appreciated in a platform game, we'll find another enemy, which is Spiked Enemy. We cannot jump on their heads for obvious reasons, but they will fire, again, rockets. So the bombs have never been more useful. On level 5, we find Mayhem. And yes, this is the bridge between the easy levels and the hard levels. If we are not careful on this level, we will waste a life. And if we fall down one of those pits of death, that's an instant star remover. And we'll find ourselves with virtually no weaponry and a tough way back. So let's hope that does not happen. In the meantime, we have found that one of our MIAs is protected by an electro trap or some kind of barbed wire fence. The best way to get rid of that is to zip down there, collect that nitro, and then we can return and blow him out of there. But before we leave this spot, it's a good idea to clean up those stars. And yes, we've actually found another MIA on our troubles. So let's not get too close to that thing or we'll take on damage. But let's collect that and zip down and get those stars. You'll also notice a helicopter is also incessantly buzzing our way there from the left of the screen and that will incessantly appear and get on our nerves dropping enemy soldiers into our path. Nothing we can do about that and these teeth unfortunately need to be rammed off the platform. We cannot kill those, that's just another one of those indestructible enemies. On this particular level there is a very tough section in the top right hand corner this is heavily defended by mortar rounds and more of those enemy soldiers. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a pit of death and it is a trap. If we wander around there to the top right, um, we will get our asses kicked. There are actually no MIAs in this area, and so we don't really need to venture down here. Particularly with the pits of death there, we do not want to fall down and die simply by gaining extra score. But we can use the Dweezil Cat again to collect those extra stars and we oh, made that mistake there. If we do, then that's a tough time ahead. Now, we have no stars remaining. We can hit this guy and collect one, that's terrific. But we need 20 stars to gain our first weapon and 40 stars to gain the best weapon, which is the bombs. So all we can do to get rid of these wizards is to put those soldiers into a helmet bomb and launch those against the wizards and they will blow up. If you try to tackle the wizards head on directly, well that won't work. And yes, we can use the helmet bomb against multiple enemies there. So let's just avoid those. Luckily, jumping on and off platforms and timing those isn't too hard. But you see me stretching there and that incurring damage. Sometimes, because the controls are so tight, sometimes you will stretch inadvertently when you want it to fire. And so it is best to leave the controller alone and press fire independently. You can see the MIAs on this level have already been collected. Do not respawn, which is terrific even though their defences respawn, but you can see I had to punch that wizard off the ledge there because he fires his own batch of lethal enemies and you can see the mortar rounds making mincemeat there so I'm having to constantly avoid and dodge those. I've actually used the nitro to blow up the communications tower so hopefully now I can jump in and destroy those mortars. The radio bunker will ensure all those mortars land on target, so by removing that, that removes those mortars and that threat. But if you use those nitros wisely, here we go, that reveals the very last MIA. And so we can carry on and milk these guys if we choose, or we can simply exit the level. At least the level gives us some idea of how to exit the level, but not a complete idea. And again, finding those MIAs is a mystery unto itself, unless you memorise exactly where they are, unless you sweep that level. And look at this, constant dodging, fighting action there, trying to lethally escape those things. And so the control system really stands up for itself in times of action and the game doesn't slow down when there is lots of action on the screen. You can see I'm trying my best to collect those stars and those large star tokens will actually give us five stars which will help and we are only a few stars now before we get to the first weapon. But look at that, we find our very first UXB mining robot. 
later on they will attack us dead on and we cannot stay in their vicinity or we will get killed straight away but for now we are invulnerable in the putty balloon and so we are going to use that to find the exit and get out of here before we lose any more lives one criticism I'd like to raise the putty squad is the fact that if we die and then reach the end of the level it gives us precious little time to write down that password the passwords are also reversed which means it's just about impossible to remember those and type those in in reverse so that's a little over enthusiasm there by the programmer of this game and the programmer in this case was Mr. John Twiddy John Twiddy broke through on the C64 by converting Tyru Seti for CRL the Ikari Warriors as well for Elite and he also worked on the last Ninja 1 and 2 for System 3 he then moved on to the Amiga with games such as Cool Spots for System 3 in 1993, Global Gladiators in 93, and Aladdin in 1994, which this game shares a little code. The graphics were created by Nick Lee and Phil Thornton. Phil Thornton worked on The Last Ninja 3 for System 3 in 1991 before moving on to Myth and Putty in 1992. The terrific music heard throughout this game was co-created by Jason Page, who is certainly no stranger to these reviews. You last heard of him in our SWAT review. And to help him, well, this guy needs no introduction. It was Richard Joseph. And you last heard of Richard Joseph, perhaps on our Speedball 2 review, Chaos Engine, Sensi World of Soccer, Robocod, and even Rise of the Robots had a Richard Joseph music stuck on top of it. So Richard Joseph there, massive legacy on the Amiga. And well, this game was on the shelf for almost 20 years before a guy called Galahad, also known as FLT, which stands for Fairlight. Galahad was a demo coder working for Fairlight, Scoopex, Rednecks and Razer 1911 there in the 90s. He was a cracking crew enthusiast and he volunteered there to release the game for the Amiga community. Galahad also worked in tune with the WHD load community and so the WHD load version which you can see me using right now is thanks to him. He received the game 99% complete and all he had to do was take out the track loader and install that with a normal Amiga DOS system. So that now works and there is no protection on this game whatsoever. In general, I think the playability really stands up and the graphics and the sound are superb. The only problem, as I say, if you lose a life, it is very hard to come back in this game. And I've only just managed to collect 33 stars, which at least gives me the electric finger. And you can see those mining robots there gunning me down. If I hadn't have jumped over that, that would be an instant death. And so instant deaths in this game are certainly not appreciated. Yes, we can fall down infinite pits of death, or by just touching the wrong enemy, we can die as well. And that wouldn't be so bad if we didn't just have 33 stars and we're on our way to a great weapon. Now all we can do is punch a few of those guys out and collect the stars one by one all over again. So I'm not sure whether that was in the game design or what. It would have been a good idea to maybe remove half of those stars. Maybe 20 stars in one go, but all of those stars means that I'm fighting badly there trying to complete this level. It is still possible, but the further you go in the game, you find the lives make it very difficult. If you die, you'll find progress even tougher. And so even on these easy first levels, and there are 35 levels in the entire game, you'll still find recovering from the death very tough. Do we dare fall down? Yes, we do, and then we make it. That was one of the major criticisms of this game because sometimes we cannot discern the bottom of the edge of the level between a pit of death. Sometimes we'll fall off those and think that we can survive and sometimes we'll fall off and simply die. It would have helped if there was water underneath to make that obvious but there isn't and so falling off there even at this stage is it possible to fall down there? Well we do not know. We must avoid as we have seen that 
mining laser, so let's not bother. And we can even collect our own nitros there as we risk life and limb trying to select the cat to exit this top of the level. And if we don't know exactly where those MIAs are, we can be wandering around levels fruitlessly and endlessly getting beaten up with hardly any energy. And of course, it also helps to memorize where all those boxes are because those chests are chests of gold sometimes when we don't have any energy to spare. And look at that, the helicopter there makes life difficult because we cannot progress and collect those extra stars there. At least that will make that journey worth it. And we can inspect the bottom of the screen and we can check out the progress that we should have made on that level and waste a lot of health and ammo in the process. We are also approaching another embedded emplacement and so we'll have to get in there and if we have the nitro selected when we jump in that makes the job a lot easier. If we have the cat food selected then that makes the job a lot harder. And look at that guided missiles trying to blow us away. It certainly helps to remove those endless respawning enemies before we even try to attempt to rescue the MIA. And then that makes that job possible. Let's get rid of that. And let's collect that guy. And now look at this. My next maneuver is over this platform. But we can't touch that robot for obvious reasons. Let's try and make it and fail. And let's blow the communications base at least. That gives us 60 credits. This guy will give us an extra star. But you can see the action soon gets packed in this game. And the player is always on their toes. The player is never stuck for something to do. But on the later levels, those endlessly respawning enemies which lurk from the left and the right, the flying enemies which sometimes appear, will get on the player's nerves. But this amazing sound effects never get boring. The fire in the hall and the MIA, okay. I certainly do love voice sound effects in an Amiga game. Let's exit that level and skip on to level 7. Now, the graphics really do take on that extra polish as we move on to level 7. You can see the backgrounds there are tremendous. And you can see even the textures there, those columns, make those things very circular indeed, with a nice shadow effect. And now that we've collected a few of those stars, at least we've got the bow and the arrow, which helps to shoot down those enemies, but they can actually shoot back and they have lasers. You can see the mask is another bonus item, and that will save enemies shooting towards us, but that will only last for 10 seconds, so we better get the most out of that. Now we have the electric finger again, so building up those weaponry items again, let's soak up that nitro and let's try and free those enemies. Hopefully if we have the electric finger that should also get rid of the cat and if we have anything less than that that probably won't have any effect. Let's try and lure that out there and get rid of it. Very nice indeed. Fire in the hole will usually tell us when there is a grenade approaching and so always avoid those things when they approach because a grenade will take one point of our energy. So you can see there I am unable to climb down. By falling down I risk an endless pit of death but luckily those carrots can also be disposed with the electric finger which is great and while I have the shield that means I will take no damage whatsoever. And so having the shield periodically helps to break up the action and so that helps us to get around those hard to master elements and so if we make the best use of that that will reveal the trash can which gives us another power pill which well that's supposed to help us return all the way back to the beginning of the level and make that job a lot easier. In this case we'll we use that to do similar and actually find the MIA which is above here. This is the last MIA we must collect and it's difficult enough for those guys because they cannot be destroyed even with those nitros. So all we can do is find a nice safe platform and hopefully if I eject somewhere around here it saves us that time and that trouble. So there are always ways around in this game if the player is willing to think laterally and sometimes those things are very well thought out 
and certainly okay? the level design in general is very well thought out if only that they put arrows around there to tell you where the next MIA was and that made the job a lot easier and if only you didn't lose so much energy using the pussy squad mobile there and then you could actually use that to ferry yourself around the level that would have made that job much easier as well so there are one or two little annoyances which the player must put up with designer's discretion and yes we cannot even explore the bottom of the level because of the inertia in the putty balloon the inertia will drag us under and so now we have zero stars yet again and we have one life remaining so inertia there makes our life a misery and we have to play the level all over again every enemy respawns the only thing which doesn't respawn is the mias and thank heaven for small mercies the last MIA on this level is difficult for me to remember where it is. It's actually quite near the start. I've rescued all the other MIAs and all I need to do is to move right and I will find that guy. And so let's do that. There he is. Unfortunately, I cannot climb above on that ledge because it's just too low. And the constant enemies on this level, which cannot be destroyed with any weapon, any gnome weapon, those green spiky aliens will get on our nerves as well as those teeth. So all you can do is punch that off the ledge and that gives us a little bit of a break. We can use Dweezil to jump up there or it's probably best just to jump over to the other side and use the actual ledge to climb up there legitimately. That will even give us some extra cat food and that tells us that we need to use Dweezil sometimes and that will help us jump over those enemies. And well, it gives us two hands there which shows the exit is in the bottom right corner. So look at that, homing missiles there, bullets which weave up and down, but again, thanks to the amazing immaculate controls, those controls always mean that we can survive if we have the reactions to match. But on punch power there, I cannot defend myself against those carrots, so I'm basically having to do that. Let's just pick up the shield to make that job easier, and let's exit this level. Actong, actong! So as the next level looks relatively similar to the previous level, let's speed up that action and get there. But it's certainly great to see the level designs changing periodically and there are maybe six or eight different level designs in the entire game and so they have been certainly put to good use. Unfortunately the very best level designs in the entire game are towards the end of the game and the average player and maybe the casual player will probably never get to see those because these levels really do get tricky and by the time you get up to level 10 you'll find performance difficult unless you have the very top weapon. So this game is no pushover and sometimes it's grueling. Look at that, I'm having to use those extra special features there to gain those stars and I only have two because we have died, we have not gained any extra lives and we have to be rough and ready there. Well, let's try it from a different angle. Sometimes you have to wade in and try different tricks on every level and there is certainly something to master on every level and so progressing in this game isn't easy but it can be worth it. These teleports certainly spice up the action every now and again. Those will teleport us to MIAs and in this case it's teleported us to the end of the level which is helpful but again we have no idea where the other MIAs are we just know that they are in the left direction so we certainly know that the carrots can't be killed with this weedy fire power so maneuvering around the level is definitely helped by those pee pills and the speed and the agility of the character so i'd say this game in general is a mixed bag but certainly the game deserves the high 80s or the early 90s due to those amazing graphics the amazing sound the amazing playability the dexterous handling of the main character and those skills and so the puzzles are also easy to master and yet challenging the adventurer so that's as far as i got on this playthrough it's just a demo play but just to show you a few of the later levels well four of those in fact you'll see the graphics do change and you can see that very smooth background there layer caked in this case 
with all those graphical effects. And look at that maggots eating the shelves there. You cannot touch those or else we'll lose energy. And look at that, the wizard firing homing missile. Ouch, it looks like we're going to die very shortly. Perhaps not quite the death you're expecting, but we got there in the end. So let's skip on through. On the next level, we find a ghost train. And this isn't the next level directly from the previous one. This is just a skip through of the game. And look at this amazing scrolling on the backgrounds in parallax there. You can see on the ghost train, we have even more enemies to avoid and more graphical treats. This level is not particularly hard and it's a shame that these easy levels are stuck somewhere halfway in the middle of the game to help players rather than the beginning of the game to help novices to get further. But nevertheless, look at that. By using the zip and veal there, we can zip around the level and destroy things at our leisure, remembering not to fall off the bottom of the screen or we'll die. So that's the spooky nightmare ghost train level. And we can certainly find that level pretty easy. Boo! Am I okay? Even the music sounds much better on the later levels as well. Towards the end of the game, the player will find these towers of destruction and these arrows basically say do not fall down that pit of death because you'll be taken all the way down that skyscraper of death and at the bottom you'll find a pit of death and you'll probably die. So do not do that, the aim is to survive by jumping wildly and in this case attack is your best defence. Use the enemies against each other, throw those into each other and hope that you avoid that helicopter because that is basically a necessary evil. And look at that, we are struggling to gain the extras and maybe the nitro, there it is. The nitro can be gained and look at that nice leap of faith between one ladder and the next. And we can even traverse the level by leaping like Tarzan. But it's a shame that the earlier levels didn't have more of these great leaps and they had Look at that spikes on the side there. They had pits of death, but not many of these great leaps. So we do find those on the later levels. And again, great music to match. The last level I will be showing you in this play guide is towards the end of the game itself. And that is an undersea world. Strangely, in the depths of despair, we cannot float around like so many other games and we cannot take on enemies by swimming. But unfortunately, if we touch the red enemy, that will kill us on contact. And that is yet another one of those unfairnesses in this game. The player basically wanders into that enemy by mistake the first time around and then they have to remember the lethality of some of these enemies the next time around. Okay. This level is even better looking than the undersea level in Turrican 3, but that isn't hard given the AGA chipset. And the magazine reviewers were certainly impressed with the full game, which was released to them in 1991. Amiga Format gave the full game a gold rating, Amiga Power gave it 91%, praising its varied level shapes, its masterful graphics and animation, and also its consistent game logic. Finally, C Omega gave the full game 94%, saying the fact that the game was very playable and had very consistent fluidity throughout. I'd say apart from falling through the floor and basically wandering into pits of death and animals of death at random, I'd say this game really stands up. The playability is really there and as so long as the player can wield those great guns, then they'll find the levels interesting and the power-ups and everything else make sure this game is slightly quirky and well above the average. <laughs> it seems a shame that they didn't release this at the time, but now anyone can play this. I can't see any reason why platform fans shouldn't check this game out.